All right, so this is 3.13 from Griffiths, which references example 3.13 uh, from the textbook. And if you haven't done that, I would recommend looking through it. Um, maybe I'll go over that, but uh, I'm using results from that example. So make sure you understand what happened there. So it says, find the potential in the infinite slot of example 3.13, or I'm sorry, 3.3, if the boundaries at x equals 0 consists of two middle strips from y equals 0 to y equals a over 2, which has a potential v0, and a over 2 to a, which has potential negative v0. So basically what we have is x of 0 at y holds two different values. It's v0 for y between 0 and a over 2, and negative v0 for a over 2 to a. Now the result we get from the problem, it'll work the exact same if you actually want to go through it, but for the sake of time, your potential is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, c sub n e to the negative n pi x over a, sine of n pi y over a. So if this comes across like I'm just pulling this out of nowhere, uh, it's coming from the example. So in our constant Cn is 2 over a, the integral from 0 to a, v0 is a function of y, sine n pi y over a dy. Okay, so that was from the example problem itself. And now, essentially, what we're going to do is we want to find the constant here. So cn is equal to 2 over a. And what's happening now is this integral will be broken up because v0 of y changes. So from 0 to a over 2, it's positive v0 sine n pi y over a dy. I'm just going to factor out the minus from a over 2 to a, v naught sine n pi, n pi y over a dy. So that was supposed to be negative v naught, but I just factored it out. So we can say cn is then equal to 2 over v naught a. Uh, so we're going to have to do times a over n pi negative cosine of n pi y over a evaluated from 0 to a over 2 plus a over n pi so we're doing a u sub cosine of n pi y over a evaluated from a over 2 to a. Okay, so I can see that we can factor out that. Um, if we factor out the a, that'll drop in the denominator, and we get an n pi here. Minus cosine of n pi over 2. That's if we evaluate it at a over 2. So the a drops, and you get your 2, plus 1. Cosine of 0 is just plus 1. Plus cosine of n pi. So that's if we uh, evaluate it at a. Minus cosine of n pi over 2. Okay. So all we've done so far is evaluate it. Now this guy here. If we think of this, um, whatever number you're putting in, it's essentially going to alternate signs. If you do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, basically the only thing happening is it's alternating signs. So I'll call it negative 1 to the n. So when n is 1, it's pi, and cosine of pi is negative 1, and negative 1 to the 1 is negative 1. When it's 2, then you have 2 pi, cosine of 2 pi is 1, and negative 1 to the second power is 1. So that's why that is what it is. So c sub n is 2 v naught over n pi. 
So cosine of n pi over 2. So that's going to be just 1. So whether it's pi over 2, whether it's whatever, uh, essentially what you're going to be getting is just 1 there. Uh, I'm sorry, um, your 1 is coming from here, plus negative 1 to the n, and then cosine n pi over 2, cosine n pi over 2, that's minus 2 cosine n pi over 2, combining like terms. It's kind of late here, I don't know if you can see the clock, but uh, it's 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's that, so we brought the 1 down, and then we combined some like terms. Now we can notice a few things that will help us with this. If n is an odd number, then our constant is zero, right? So basically, if that's the case, then it's gonna be one minus uh, one minus one, which is zero. And if we plug in an odd number here, whether that's 1, 3, 5, that's also 0. So 1 minus 1 is 0, that's all going to be 0. If n equals 4, 8, 12, so on, 16, c sub n is also 0. Now, why is that? Well, we kind of have to look at it. So first off, if we do that, and this will be 1 plus 1, right? Because n is an even number, so that'll be a, a positive. But if we plug that in, 4 over 2 will be 2 pi. So you'll always get minus 2 here. So 1 plus 1 minus 2 is 0. So that's why those are not possible. Instead, if n is equal to 2, 6, 10, 14... If you plug those numbers in, you'll see you'll get um, cosine of pi, cosine of two, 3 pi, cosine of 5 pi, and I'm sorry, yeah, cosine of pi, cosine if you plug in 6, for example, cosine of 3 pi, and so on. So what you end up getting there is 1 plus 1. So let me erase this. The 1 stays. It's still even, so that's plus 1. But because that we're always going to be, um, you can think of it if you drew a little unit circle, we're basically always right here on this side, which means that negative 2 will turn into a positive 2. And you end up getting a 4 there. So Cn is equal to 2 v naught over n pi times 4, or 8 v not over n pi. So that's what that is. Um, and I think they wanted the potential. So to find the potential, v as a function of x, y is equal to the sum, sum n equals 2, 6, 10. So it's a infinite uh, sum, or series, I should say. C sub n, we said, was 8 v naught over n pi e to the minus n pi x over a sine of n pi y over a. And if you wanted to, you could factor out um, 8 v naught over pi. We have this sum of 1 over n e to the minus n pi x over a sine of n pi y over a. And this is your potential. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a little weird these questions can be, but if you think about it, it kind of makes sense.